The examples that we've seen so far were really pretty easy to create because they were essentially standard plot types that could be generated nearly automatically from the data. PyPlot, as I mentioned, allows you to control many aspects of the plots. So if you want to generate some kind of a plot or visualization that doesn't fall into one of the standard categories, you can do that, but it gets a lot more complicated. One of the reasons is that there's not just one way to create plots. And so if you have a particular idea in mind of a visualization that you want to do, and you start going online to see how to do it, you're going to find at least one or two or three different ways to create that plot. And that is a bit confusing. One of the reasons is I've not seen evidence that there is the same kind of overarching theoretical framework in PyPlot as you have in R. So if you're an R user and you're used to ggplot, ggplot is based on this sort of theoretical outlook on graphing known as grammar of graphics. And there isn't, as far as I can tell, any overarching theoretical framework like that, which is one of the reasons why there seem to be a lot of different sort of ad hoc methods for creating the graphs. You get a lot of control, but then the challenge, if it's not automated, is somehow you have to get the attributes out of your data and assign them to the right attributes of the plot. And that is where the challenge is. In order to be able to do this, it oftentimes requires a lot of data wrangling. And to be able to carry that out successfully, you really need to be pretty familiar with Panda's data frames and all of their pieces and about their indices. And also, a lot of times you're ending up generating pandas series, and we haven't spent a lot of time talking about those. As I said early on, the input that goes into PyPlot is actually NumPy arrays. And because pandas series and panda data frame columns are at their core NumPy arrays, you can pretty much generally pass those into PyPlot and they'll work. But a lot of times, if you go and look at code examples, many of these code examples will use NumPy arrays as the input. And so if you're unfamiliar with NumPy arrays, this can also be confusing. And you may want to actually learn more about NumPy just in order to be able to understand the code examples better. Having said this, we will look at a rather complicated example, which is creating a stacked bar chart.